Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and to my surprise, I was directed to some information regarding a dirty dev that was covered six years ago, dating all the way back to September of 2017. And this new information showcased not only the return of perhaps the most prolific asset flippers to ever be uncovered on the Steam storefront, but it also served as an example, via interactions with Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic Games, just how terrible the policies and operations of the Epic Games Store actually are. And it is that anti-consumer behavior of Epic Games that is actually the focus of this video, but in order to show full context for this situation, we actually have to travel back in time to the event of September 2017, where through the efforts of Melo Online, Surviolent Death, Lord Croco Squirrel, Reaper, NBC Company X, Ratchet3789, A Flying Brick, Sanji Himura, Frundoman, and along with yours truly, this most prolific of asset flippers were summarily ejected from the Steam storefront by Valve. And I make certain whenever I discuss this topic that I provide those individuals that I just listed their due, as they were all instrumental in that situation, and despite Polygon and Kotaku citing my video as the source for their articles at that time, it was very much a team effort, where without the work of everyone else, the full extent of these asset flippers' actions might never have come to light. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the return of the biggest asset flipper we have ever covered, Silicon Echo. The story of Silicon Echo did not start with the asset flips themselves. Unfortunately for a few hundred people, it all started with a Kickstarter scam. And that scam was for the game The Herbologist, which was promoted as a first-person mystery game. This was successfully crowdfunded on Kickstarter, raising a little over $10,500, where that Kickstarter funding window closed on February 4th, 2017. Silicon Echo then posted an update on June 6th of that year, stating that the team had suffered a major setback in production, but that production had resumed as of early May, and that the game was already 90% completed. Then on September 5th, Silicon Echo posted their final update to the Kickstarter, stating that the Steam store page would be ready that week, and that the backers would soon be able to play it. However, that store page never materialized, and Silicon Echo had gone silent. Silence does not mean inactivity, unfortunately, in this case. Because you see, back in those days, Valve had transitioned away from Steam Greenlight to the new Steam Direct. And where Steam Greenlight relied on a voting system, making it a popularity contest of sorts that was exceptionally easy to manipulate, Steam Direct simply required a $100 fee to be paid to Valve, and you can go right ahead and post your game or asset flip to the largest PC gaming market without issue. Both of these systems gave rise to all of the asset flippers and some of the dirty devs previously covered on this channel over the years. And why they did it was because it was a fantastically easy way to make money. This was done through a variety of means, through the use of gray market sites to sell hundreds of thousands of copies of the game for a fraction of a cent in order to seed bot farmers while engaging in bot farming themselves, where those farming accounts would obtain trading cards for these games, and then either sell those cards via other gray market sites or convert those trading cards to gems, which were then used to purchase card packs for other big budget or AAA games, which were then sold on the Steam community market or on gray market sites. These asset flippers even got wise to those on Steam who wanted to artificially boost their profile rankings and would inject hundreds, sometimes thousands, of Steam achievements into their asset flips in order to take advantage of the sales from those accounts engaged in such activity. They also utilized these Steam achievements harvesting asset flips to help boost the perceived legitimacy of bot farming accounts in order to help defeat the Steam algorithm. But while that is the reason behind why asset flippers did what they did on Steam, let's get back to these specific asset flippers in particular. In March of 2017, I covered the asset flippers Crimson Duck in the Steam games Slingster, Slingster 2, Torch Cave, Torch Cave 2, and Rage Parking Simulator 2016, where the Slingster games were nothing more than asset flips of the Unity asset pack Super Platformer 2D. Torch Cave and Torch Cave 2 were asset flips of the Unity asset Mr. Mustache Jump and Run, and Rage Parking Simulator was an asset flip of 2D Parking Simulator. But this led us down a rabbit hole of sock puppet accounts, of which there were a total of 13. 
which included Anteater Games, Broad Play Games, Cucumber Games, Digital Irony, Digital Carrot Productions, Floop Productions, Netfork Studios, Pixberry Studios, Silicon Echo, Sword Bubble Games, Zonitron Productions, Crimson Duck, Goo Cublets Games, and Zonitron Studios. And across those 13 Sock Puppet accounts, Silicon Echo had released a total of 173 games onto Steam, which during the month of August of 2017, Silicon Echo accounted for 10% of all games released on Steam for that month and a full 1% of all games ever to be released on Steam at that time. Now, I mentioned Steam Direct and the Kickstarter for the Herbologist, not only because it was a part of Silicon Echo's history, but because that Kickstarter was what provided them with the funding to do this. You know, if you recall, each title released on Steam cost the developer $100, and Silicon Echo scammed a few hundred people out of over 10,000. Now, this afforded them with quite the war chest, which seemingly was then used to pepper the Steam marketplace with asset flips in order to generate money through those gray market activities, where they then took a portion of their income in order to keep the asset flips coming in order to ensure a steady income. That is, until Sentinels of the Store and me came along and peed in their Cheerios, something which legacy media picked up on and signal boosted the situation to the point where Valve stepped in and kicked Silicon Echo along with their sock puppet accounts unceremoniously out into the street. And that was that. We had suspected that Silicon Echo would return at some point simply under different names, different email addresses, and different IP addresses in order to fool Valve and to keep doing what they were doing. However, over the next couple of years, we never saw any indication of that. With members of Sentinels of the Store keeping a watchdog eye on their private social medias, Silicon Echo stayed silent and, for all intents and purposes, defeated. That is, until a few months ago, when it was noticed by Sentinels of the Store that some old familiar games were showing up over on the Epic Game Store, and due to that, I received a message from my old friend Mello Online detailing the specifics. Recently, as I said, it was discovered that a few familiar faces by way of video game titles were showing up on the Epic Game Store, where Mellow Online then sent me a link to his Twitter post where I was surprised to see games like Slingster and Slingster 2. Now, this time under the Sock Puppet account name Barebones Crew. And when I went to the Epic Game Store, I saw a grand total of 10 Silicon Echo asset flips happily being sold on the Epic Game Store. However, between yesterday and today, that number has increased to 11 as Torch Cave 2 has now been listed for a release date of September 1st. Remember that Torch Cave 2 was one of the asset flips that I covered under the Silicon Echo Sock Puppet developer account Crimson Duck. And make no mistake, each and every one of those games on your screen now are a part of the 173 asset flips Silicon Echo had previously released on Steam. These asset flips are now being drip-fed onto the Epic Game Store by Silicon Echo to the tune of 2-3 to three asset flips per month. And it makes one wonder, whatever happened to the curation that Tim Sweeney was previously so fond of? Now let me show you what I mean by that. In 2019, PC Gamer released the article, The Epic Store Won't Accept Crappy Games, Says Tim Sweeney. In that article, Tim Sweeney is quoted where they write, We'll have a quality standard that doesn't accept crappy games, he said. We'll accept reasonably good quality games of any scale, whether small indie games to huge AAA games, and we'll take everything up to like an R-rated movie or an M-rated game. A GTA game would be fine to us, but Epic's not going to distribute porn games or bloatware or asset flips or any sort of thing that's meant to shock players. The PC is an open platform, and if we don't distribute it in our store, you can still reach consumers directly. Note there, Tim Sweeney did explicitly state that they would not allow asset flips onto their storefront. Epic's not going to distribute porn games or bloatware or asset flips. Well, it would seem that stance has since changed, as Tim Sweeney responded to Mellow Online's Twitter thread where he said the following, Are they fun games? The team here looks for that and doesn't go on a hunt to determine what amount of asset packs were used in its creation. He then followed up on that, stating, Regarding Valve's criticism of the developers, that's not a factor in our decision making. The Epic Games Store team makes their own calls based on the developers' conduct here. Valve's open store bans lots of stuff we welcome like crypto, AI, competing payment processors, etc. However, Epic Games' own documentation for game developers explicitly states that asset flipping is not allowed. And this shows me that Tim is not fully comprehending what is being stated by Mellow Online, Surveillant Death, and me. 
where we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that these are asset flips. We've experienced these in the past from this person in the past. These are not a combination of assets used in a creative way. They are pre-built bought asset packs that are simply rebranded and posted wholesale as a game. They are the very definition of an asset flip. And Silicon Echo is not the only former asset flipper I've tangled with in the past that has snuck on to the Epic Games Store. This is the Epic Games Store product Evelina by the developer Dark Sexual Arts. However, at one point in time, that was a game titled Valortha by the asset flipper Ryu vs. Cloud. It was a horrendously terrible game that, at that time, which was also 2017, had more stringent hardware requirements than Resident Evil 7, which was released in January of that year. Ryu vs. Cloud attempted to ban evade Steam by reposting the game under the developer and publisher name Sexual Darkness and rebranded the game's name to Evelina. Once this was brought to Valve's attention, this asset flipper got the boot a second time and apparently had taken the hint. And this asset flipper couldn't even be bothered to write a new description for the game on the Epic Games Store. It is simply a copy-paste of the old Steam descriptions for Valortha and Evelina word for word. And then there is also the asset flip Mortal Street Fighter which I have seen this asset so many times I can recall it from memory, even though I haven't seen it in over five years, and it is Beat 'em Up Game Template 3D, a Unity asset pack developed by Osarian. We've actually seen this asset pack used on the Epic Games Store twice in the past, once with Street Striker by Boom Games, where that asset flip is now unavailable, and there was another called Deadly Flight, which has since had its Epic Games Store page completely removed. Now, it is worth noting that asset flippers are not able to earn insane amounts of money via the gray market in the manner that they did with Steam via abuse of the trading card system, sales of game keys to bot farms, and engaging in bot farming themselves along with achievement harvesters. However, these asset flippers will still earn money from direct game sales for these asset flips, and also there is the added detriment to legitimate games and developers who are forced to share storefront space with these asset flips where the potential exists that some unsuspecting gamer will go and purchase the asset flip as opposed to going and buying the game that the legitimate indie dev poured their heart and soul into. Compounding this issue is the Epic Games Store completely lacks discussions forums and the ability for users to post reviews. That could serve as a potential deterrent to people wasting their money on asset flips or terrible games, but it is something that Epic Games Store once said they would include, but it would be an opt-in for game developers, and it is a tool that has, to date, never been implemented. This is a lack of checks and balances on the part of Epic Games that allows bad faith actors like Silicon Echo and Ryu vs. Cloud to be able to resurface. And with Silicon Echo's massive number of asset flips left over from their Steam days, unless and until Epic Games steps up to enforce their own rules, indie developers will face increasing competition from Silicon Echo and others, as Silicon Echo still has well over 150 compiled executables to release on Epic as alleged games. An additional fear is that history might serve to create a better criminal here. With Silicon Echo learning from lessons of their past on Steam and better hide within the Epic Games Store environment via even more and better obfuscated sock puppet accounts. Either way, the return of Silicon Echo does not bode well for legitimate indie developers. And I feel for them. I really do. These people, the vast majority of which are simply passionate about making games that people will enjoy, are faced with the potential of losing sales and losing visibility to an asset flipper that once dominated the Steam storefront and scammed people out of over $10,000 on Kickstarter. And to see Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic Games, defending this behavior is every bit as disappointing to see particularly where when there were rampant perceptual issues regarding the free games being offered by Epic and people's ability to access them, Tim was the one that was willing to listen to the thoughts and suggestions of a small YouTuber and to actually implement those suggestions which greatly helped gamers during that scenario. To see him turn such a blind eye to this now speaks very much to a change in mindset and in priorities, all the while refusing to see the forest for the trees. One can only hope that Epic Games will actually catch on that this will become an issue for them. Steam has already gone down this path despite Tim's obvious disdain for Valve. They've seen the trouble that it can cause both them and game developers on their platform, and they sought a resolution, something that Epic Games currently does not appear willing to do. Will they change their tune? Well, I suppose only time will tell. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. And I'll see you next time.